Mm-hmm. All right, so a day after our border-to-border -border trip, I'm servicing uh, the cruiser, and uh, besides changing the oil, I'm changing the um, axle fluids. And <laughs> if one is wheeling their vehicle hard enough, the rocks will actually um, distort this uh, drain plug here and it actually helps if one uh, uses the right socket to try to unscrew it and hammer it. What I've done was obviously this part over here is distorted so I was hammering the, the socket I'm making room <laughs> instead of 24 millimeter I used 23 millimeter so I kind of um, I'm not a big deal I'll, I'll just file it this this plug down and it'll be fine but uh, whoever is going to do it it's 24 millimeters if one is forgets and doesn't have access to this particular video any or any any other way to find out just try the uh, socket up here even if it because of the distortion the socket will not fit easily here it's the same size as a fill plug. Um, what else? Front pumpkin takes almost three quarts, um, 2.7, I believe. But basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it until it starts just dripping uh, from here, um, and that I'll, I'll call it good. The rear pumpkin, it's uh, almost four quarts, just a little bit more. But I'm, I'm going to use the same process. I'm not going to sit there and measure it. Besides that, um, it's a good idea to, once the plug is out, to inspect. Of course, of course, when when the gear oil is actually draining, it's it's a good time to to see the color of it so that it wouldn't be too dark um, or too liquidy. That that will indicate some water in there or if it's uh, if it's too thick that means that the burrs pushing some of the grease into the pumpkin and uh, the seals needs to be uh, uh, replaced on the burrs um, but the tip of the plug has a magnet it's it's a magnetic tip so you would uh, uh, you, will, you will have all the sludge sludge is perfectly fine if there is excessive metal shavings and sludge that's what it's basically very fine metal shavings uh, with with uh, gear oil uh, and when it's looking like a paste um, it's fine it's 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 normal wear and tear um, if if there is any kind of uh, bigger chunks of metal that indicates that um, there is too much slack in the uh, ring and pinion or some kind of other wearing problems so uh, refilling process will be pretty easy of course the plug will have to be plugged in the refilling will be done on both pumpkins in the same location uh, the easiest way to do it is either using the hose and kind of squeeze what i'm using for gear oil is i just went with the super tech walmart full synthetic I don't know what the quality is I haven't done the research but um, I suppose if I'll be running it in the desert all the time or towing I'll be more concerned but uh, the excessive heat and the quality of lubricant um, but anyway it will be pretty easy to refill just uh, using this bottle and the hose because obviously because of not easy access to that hole and, and it's pretty much vertical it would uh, um, especially in the front where uh, the steering bars are it will be pretty hard to squeeze it in it would be almost in this position but with the hose you can stick it in the hose and just uh, squeeze it
Well, actually, with those flexi bottles, it's not even necessary to use the hose in the front either. One can uh, squeeze out as much out of the bottle as possible, empty the rest of it in the next one, squeeze it some more, and and it works that way just fine. Alright, so what we have here is a fuel filter. And it's one of those instances when one is wondering how in the world some decisions are made of where locating those things. Yeah, I'm going to put something under. Now, the filter is located under the in intake manifold and I'm going to attempt to show on the camera. Um, where is it, Mitch? Oh, I see it. I'll, g I'll grab it. I'll make an attempt to, to show where it is. Where, right there where Mitch's hand is. Anyway, it just, well, to begin with, it seems like it's been replaced once. The second line in the back. It's held up by two bolts to the manifold, and then, there, of course, there's two lines. Right now, it's held just by one bolt. This rear one, there is just, there's no way to access it unless you remove the whole manifold. So, I think whoever was replacing it last time did not even bolt this side in and doesn't look like we're going to bother with it either because it's just impossible to access. Now from the top Mitch is working on a, on a fuel line, the in and out and uh, the actual fuel filter is all the way next to the engine under this exhaust manifold. Intake manifold, that's right. And uh, so Jake is trying to get to the end line from the bottom. Luckily, he has long arms. Well, I can hear the flow, so. He must have broke it loose. But this is just Turn it uh, more time. on my old Jeep. I had a filter that was located along the frame. Out of the way, I just don't understand the purpose of having that. It was right by the carb. Might be able to freehand it now. No, there. I probably get from right here, Mitch. There was. Oh, that's right. Yes. I don't remember, where, maybe it was a Scout. It might have been Scout. But I know Jeep was right by the carbon I installed yeah, now, on the frame. Now that, I, that, that, I, uh, that you mentioned it, I remember now also. But anyway, there's plenty of easy, accessible ways to to put that air filter and fuel. A, a fuel filter. Did you see and it just buggles paper? my mind. Yep. Can you find it? Yeah. yeah. There should be another one somewhere around. Well, while I'm up here, oh. since I'm changing the, the, the oil, I, would, I thought I would mention this uh, filter that I have installed um, a while back. Basically, it's a um, water separator for air tanks, air... Um, compressed air just, systems and what I'm using it for um, this breather valve that evacuates uh, some of the gases from the um, from the engine goes straight into the intake manifold and I really didn't care for all that oil um, coating on the inside the, the manifold so I installed, I installed this separator and it's been on for probably a couple of years now and it works fairly decent. Um, 
every I would say a thousand miles or so I have to empty it and it's basically uh, the air comes in comes out um, with some oil droplets some of the moisture and it separates without going into the manifold so it's been working fairly well all right Mitch is a champ and Jake too there's Jake a champ <laughs> they are actually finishing it up I guess their hands and especially Jake's longer and not as butch as mine and I don't even have that butch of a hand but it's really um really hard to get in there here's Mitch's hand somewhere there yeah very manly hands well manly enough to fix things and that's what counts it's never the looks I wasn't talking about looks what are you talking about then as far as looks go I have very early hands but they're very versatile. Versatile. Where's the wrench? The 17. Well, here's how it goes, and I think this is going to be it for the maintenance for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.